Hello, fellow CRT aficionados. Thank you for joining me again today on Retro Tech. I've got a deep dive special. We're going to be jumping right into this CRT you see behind me. It is a Sony PVM 1943MD professional video monitor, and it is from 1992. So it has just been recapped and had a lot of other service done to the hardware, but now we're going to jump into the back here and do the calibration for it. And just to set up what you're going to see here on your screen, over here on this side, you'll notice a cut in the screen, and that third of the screen is behind the monitor. I have a camera set up, and you can see the potentiometers back there. That's how we're going to control and adjust any kind of adjustment for geometry that we're going to be doing today. And then on the major screen over here behind me, there's going to be the actual screen in different geometry modes. So you can see a real-time adjustment on this stuff. I've had a lot of requests to do this, so I'm just going to go through and do it real time. This screen does not look that great. I'll show you what I mean uh, after we get started, but I'm going to go ahead and back out now and get going and doing some work. Let's take a look here at first. We've got obviously some curvature or pen amp settings that need to be adjusted. Our horizontal shift is shifted uh, this direction, so the left side of your screen it's, it's shifted too far over there, so it needs to be shifted back towards center. Uh, vertical center needs to come down and be expanded. Let's look at some test patterns here real quickly. The first one will be just a grid pattern, the first grid pattern. And I can see a lot here. So what I want to first do is I want to try to get this picture centered on this uh, screen real quickly. And to do that... I'm going to adjust the horizontal and vertical center just adjusting the brightness there real quick. So again, you got to do this while this is running. And if your CRT does not have a service menu like this one does not or any kind of onboard service menu, then you're going to be stuck using these potentiometers back here in this area to calibrate. Now there is a listing along here beside each one of these and it does like point an arrow to which one it is so this one right here i'm going to stick on is the vertical size so let's just make sure that that's right oh okay maybe it's the other one next to it yeah there we go so there's the vertical size okay so we we'll want to get that I can see it all, and then we need vertical center, so I could pull the vertical centerness down a little bit. It might be this one, it might not be. We'll just have to test and see. That's linearity, so no. And that's definitely not it either. Screen bow, but I mean, this is the problem with working on these older ones: is you just are going to sit here and play with these things till you find the right ones maybe so our horizontals here so our first ones are horizontal settings let's refresh ourselves with what we got our second one is under scan and so is this one that's what i was wrong with these two are under scan this one is vertical size so we got vertical size horizontal size I wonder if this would be like vertical center or horizontal center. No, nope, that's pin amp. And this one is not it either. Let's shift over to these. No. No. Okay, so there's. Potentiometer is not adjusting it that far, so let me show you something else we can do. Let's get this back to a center position. There's actually an additional adjuster up here towards the front that's supposed to sweep this a little bit closer. 
Let's do that. <clears throat> Let's see if that'll help us be able to adjust this anymore. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So I want to get red lines right in the center. And then the vertical center. So I'm not sure which one. I think this is the top one, maybe? This top blue one? Yes. Okay. So the top two, top two vertical center, horizontal center, horizontal size, vertical size. So we'll have to adjust the vertical size up a little bit more. It should be this one, right? Or this one. That's a center. Uh, size. Yeah, there we go. So I want it to be, you know, really close to that line. And then I can take it down a little bit. Center. And then we'll expand it slightly a bit more. Tell you, once you recap it, it definitely improves your ability to get in here and make these adjustments. So I've set the screen centeredness here. The next thing I want to work on is kind of the pen amp settings. I want to try to clean up these edges. Now this edge over here does not look as bad as this edge. This edge is way more pronounced, which means there's slight bit of screen bow and other things going on so before i get in there and adjust like the yoke and stuff i want to make sure that i get this done as well as possible so um let's do some pin cushion settings which will be listed on here as we we'll probably do a vertical angle bow Pin phase and pin amp. Okay. Pin phase. It's going to help us straighten that corner if possible. So there's one straight side, but this side over here is way blown out. You can't really have it like that. So try to center that. And then they were going to use the pin phase because the pin phase will be like the Star Wars credits. See how it goes. It's just too far out. And yeah, that's all it really is, is just watching the screen. Trying to balance the tops, bottoms, and the corners. Man, that other corner is just way whacked out. I'm not sure what's going on with the magnetism down here. But it is, it's just off on its own planet. I feel like it's a lot of convergent strips in here, so a lot of those are probably going to have to be removed and reset. The convergence is just awful. So let's see if maybe we can straighten that up a little bit with the screen and angle. So let's see if we can get some angle adjustments here to improve that corner at all maybe that's the problem it's really hard though on a larger screen and um, to do this so you gotta realize that you're not going to be able to get it perfect but the good news is is once you get it set you know you're you're going to be well set for a while so that's pretty pretty good that's a little bit better um We'll work on some other things here. Let's see whether this can help at all or not. I feel like the left side's in pretty good shape, but it's hard to see the right side while you make an adjustment because it's all the way across from 
the potentiometers. The potentiometers are going to favor that left side of the screen when you're looking at it because you're going to be able to see over there easily what you're doing. Um, it's not as bad as I thought, but it's not perfect, obviously. It's still a little bit wonky in on the corner down here. And then maybe that's a linearity adjustment will help. Uh, that screen section right here, maybe it's bubbled out a little bit because the linearity is a little low. Or the whole screen's bubbled out a little bit at the bottom still. So let's take a first another swing at the pin. Pin amp and pin phase. We're going to do one last adjustment on there and see if we can make it any better. Definitely feel like there's a linearity issue going on there. Now just, you know, the other ones are easier to adjust because they the newer models when they added the service menu because you've got actual numbers and you can just change them and change them back easily. This, there is no number. So you have to just concentrate on one thing at a time, one setting, and make sure that uh, once you're done with that setting, it's in the best spot possible for it to be. Excuse my head in the way, but let's see if I can get this. This monitor also does not have like a lower and upper pin amp. It just has one pin amp. I can't do that. So I'm going to be kind of equal. The distance between the edge at the top, bottom. And they have distance equal kind of at these corners. It's very hard to get it like that, though. That's what you're shooting for when you're making that kind of adjustment and to make sure that the screen isn't warped or tearing or anything. Which, again, I think the linearity is off a little bit on that. Let's try linearity adjustment. I believe that's like this one or the one under it. No, nope. see that's horizontal center again. It's probably horizontal frequency or something. You got vertical angle, vertical bow. Let's try this one. It's obviously not it. The idea is just to try to get it as best as you can. This is, again, a very archaic way to do this. <laughs> right? I think this big blue one might be my... Oh, it's a vertical center. I thought that it might say vertical correction. Oh, uh, video phase. Video. There really is no linearity. Maybe this one, this is the only one I don't... But I thought that was going to be size vertically. No, there it is. So that's our one linearity. Let's go to linearity. We have one adjustment for linearity. So we want to make sure our circles are good and rounded. The best thing to do here is try to make them all as, as circular as possible. So... I know that the camera might lose focus on that because it's trying to catch something and it's not seeing anything. There we go. So that's the linearity adjustment. All right, so here is our grid screen. Once again, we fixed our linearity. That did help out with some of the screen bowing. So just going back and forth again between those limited settings that we have, I don't know that we're going to get like the pin cushion or pin amp or pen, uh, vertical angle and bow, and linearity. I don't think we're going to get those really any better. So the last thing to do would be expand the size out a little bit and 
really see how it looks with it expanded. I mean, there might be one little. Let's try and do um, actually one more pin adjustment because I feel like maybe that's still a little off. That's not even the one I wanted. I wanted to do the other one. <laughs> All right, let's do a pin amp adjustment real quick and see if we can. Man, this is just ridiculous. This is just not very many things you can adjust on these older monitors. Thankfully, there's still some, but... Not quite as much as the newer PVMs have. Let's just try to get this as good as possible. I think that one corner is going to be just kind of messed up down there for a minute. be too far in. All right, let's go now and see if we can take a quick check and see how our adjustments are looking. A little better. Goodness. So, real quickly here, I'm going to try to Straighten this yoke out. I'll show, try to show you on the secondary camera what that means. So here's my yoke here on the right hand side of your screen. Here's my yoke. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen up this little screw right here. It doesn't have to be completely loosened, but just enough like that. And then I'm going to take and wiggle this just a little bit. Anyway, that's the reason I can't get it so good as I go push that up against it. But I'm just going to take my hand and wiggle that. So let me maybe back this camera out a bit so you can see me doing that, hopefully. Take my hand, you know, put it on here. Now you have to make sure that your yoke is protected with plastic and everything. This one is very, you know, adjustable. Some of these, if you get into your monitor and there's a bunch of uh, loose ended wires, you don't want to do this like I'm doing it. That looks way better. So we'll try to push, the goal is to push the yoke back against the back of the tube evenly where the black pads are and line it up where it's, you know, not tilted. The screen is not tilted. That's how you adjust it. It's got to be adjusted where the ring is because that's where the pressure's being put on it to hold it into place. There, there, just a tiny fraction of an amount. I feel like that's good, so we'll leave my hand right there. I'll tighten this screw back on the yoke, just a little bit past hand tight. And now we are ready to expand our vertical and horizontal sides out Let's see that yoke adjustment helped me get this line vertically and uh, set correctly and it also will help with my convergence a little bit if I make sure and have it in the proper place so 
I want to go down here to this size setting. There's our vertical size, and that's too big. So when we do this, we'll go just right there. We'll try to adjust the center. Go right down a little bit. See, that's right at about perfect on the edge of the grid. And then we'll do the same with the horizontal now. It should be this one, right? Horizontal size. Edge of those grids is pretty much on it, right? See, you could see where our yoke still has a little bit of our one. I've told you before in other videos, there's always one corner that just never seems to get right. And it's, this one's probably going to be this corner. I mean, and then when I say right, I mean perfect. So um, I don't really know what else. I mean, maybe if I could get a vertical angle adjustment, we'll try that. We'll try one vertical angle adjustment. Hopefully I can get the right potentiometer here the first time. Yeah, that should be it. Let's see, that's going to mess up the top of the screen as well. All right, that's better. So let's take a quick look at some other screens before I completely expand it out. And I probably will do that expansion after we get our convergence properly set. But that's going to be it, it looks like. I bet that it's probably going to be about the best we're going to do for our geometry as far as screen geometry is concerned. Let's go take a quick look at something like a scroll test real quickly. And so that the camera doesn't do that well with that scrolling. But if we get it slower, it'll work. Let's try a different scroll test. There's a second one. Maybe it'll do a little bit better with that one. No real linearity issues. Whew. So that's about all you could do for geometry. Now, the last thing I would do is I would expand the horizontal size and centerness using this test you know this um, grid test I would expand these corners out some more to where it's about halfway between that see that it's magnetized so that's a good example where it's halfway between that dot and the top line that's where I go for on these edges and I use this first grid to do that that's the 256 by 224 if you're using the 240p test suite. And then when I get that grid pulled up, again, I'm going to try to expand that just to where the things are just out of view. Now, there are a couple of other things we can try and quickly adjust here. Let's just do this um, horizontal stat, stat, or here we go. Hang on. Let's do an H stat adjustment real quickly here while we've got all this set up. Uh, we might not get our our uh, convergence set because I'm, I'm thinking it's more of a vertical problem, but this is the potentiometer to do that. And this will adjust your red, green, blue guns horizontally, not vertically. But you can't expand them out and see which ones are really high or low. It looks like our green's just out of spec. Line them up horizontally as best as possible to where... You don't see anything on the edges. You know, you just want it to be like that. And then you can come down and make a focus adjustment, which is on the back here of the flyback itself. That's this potentiometer. And that's going to make your screen focus up as as well as it possibly can dial that in and that's going to be it for the actual geometry settings of 
this uh, PVM. And what I mean by that is the rest of the settings are be more advanced, and they're going to be dealing with they're going to be dealing with the convergence issues. So we're going to have to use convergence strips most likely, and probably work on an adjustment to the yoke rings. I'm not completely convinced that's necessary, but I will definitely see if we need to. So here's our white, red, green, blue. We don't seem to have any real purity issues, which is good. So that's a that's a plus. So um, that's going to be pretty much it for the screen geometry. Now I will show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and expand that out to where I was talking about. Halfway between the or like right about there. The same thing with horizontal size. I'm going to expand it. You can even, you know, right there. And let's go back to our screen here. Looks pretty good. I feel like the pin amp needs to. Go down a little bit. It's like it's bowed out at the corners a little bit, like a I tell you, this pin cushion settings, or you're always going to be playing with them. At least you're going to feel like it. No. All right, that's probably about as good as we're going to get it on, on there, you know. So let's see if I get a little bit more color on that screen for you. And we'll go through and show you these grids just one last time. So there's our grid. Linearity. White, red, green, blue. Okay. Now that's pretty much done for geometry. So that's how you're going to calibrate your geometry on this thing. I mean, that's real time. I'm not sure how exactly how long. Um, I will edit some parts of this out, and I did see that it took me, um, you know, right at about 30 minutes. So that's pretty standard, 30 minutes, yeah, maybe a little longer sometimes, depending on how bad the screen could be. Um, and then you probably spend another 30 minutes working on the convergence ring. So I'll come back, and if, if we do an advanced convergence ring, session. I will do that next time. Thanks again, everybody. Please make sure you leave me a comment or a like if you liked the video. Um, also, let me know if you have any questions and um, check out the Patreon page for more information on repairs. I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.